So I'm going to talk about some, some work that I have been thinking a lot the past few months. This is joint work with uh, Tammy Kolda, who's uh, a consulting firm, MathSci.ai, after being at Sandia for, for many years. Well, we're going to work, uh, talk about um, some new uh, convergence bounds for gradient descent on the matrix factorization problem. So this is uh, just a really, really quick recap if you take an optimization class and learn about some of the theory for gradient descent. Um, this is the gradient descent algorithm, um, iterative first order method for uh, hopefully finding a, a, a minimum of a smooth, smooth function. We're going to focus on gradient descent with fixed step size. So eta, the step size is going to be fixed throughout. Um, if you, you learn that sort of the best case scenario is that you're in a situation where you implement gradient descent and you get a linear convergence rate where the um, error uh, between the, the value of the loss function at the current iterate and an optimal value of the loss function sort of decreases by a factor of one minus alpha at every iteration. That's linear convergence with rate uh, alpha. And um, an important implication of a linear convergence rate is that you get an iteration complexity, that a number of iterations t of gradient descent, which is proportional to one over alpha, this, uh, this convergence rate, times log one over epsilon essentially uh, is uh, sufficient to guarantee that you'll reach an epsilon, epsilon uh, optimal uh, value of the loss function after t iterations. So I'm just gonna assume this is fact now. This is great. Unfortunately, linear convergence um, is only guaranteed for very idealized loss functions like a nice quadratic type of function that has a very, very nice strong global structure um, and these are quite distinct from the types of optimization problems we're interested, or we observe gradient descent does really well on in practice, um, such as uh, gradient descent applied to many non-convex neural, neural network type optimization loss functions. Um, well, we observe quasi-linear convergence, or convergence that's fast, um, but we don't understand yet. Um, um, so sufficient conditions for linear convergence um, that, we, that we know. It's a really clean, very um, concise and well understood theory. If the loss function is globally L smooth, so its gradient um, is L Lipschitz with L global bounding uh, the smoothness over the whole domain. And if the loss function satisfies a PL inequality, which is a little bit less strict than strong convexity, but implies strong convexity meaning that the norm squared of the gradient of the loss function is greater than or equal to mu times the, the distance of the, the loss function to an optimal value everywhere. And if a function has L, is L smooth and mu PL, then um, that implies gradient descent converges with a linear rate proportional to the condition number, or one over the condition number, uh, which would be L over mu. And so just as an example, if you've seen this again, if the loss function is linear regression, um, a linear regression problem, even if the, the matrix A is underdetermined, so it's short and fat, and there is a whole sub, uh, affine space of global solutions, um, the, we, this, the, the actual condition number of the matrix A transpose A essentially is the, the linear convergence rate um, in over or underdetermined setting. And so, Great. Are there any questions? Okay. So recap. If a loss function is L smooth and mu PL and has a finite minimal value, F star, then gradient descent with a step size of one over L converges linearly to a global minimizer of the loss function at a linear convergence rate of mu over L. So the larger the condition number, the slower the convergence. But the proof is two lines. Okay. So this is a backbone of the theory for gradient descent. Now, the problem is that these conditions are quite fragile in the sense that when we go to even the simplest non-convex optimization problems that sort of represent very caricature optimization problems uh, for neural net optimization, these conditions fail to hold the PL and the smoothness. And so I think Perna mentioned earlier, maybe like the, the simplest non-convex optimization problem or a good prototype simple non-convex optimization problem is matrix factorization where for a, a matrix A um, and for, for factors X and Y, which are of uh, D, D rows, where D is smaller than the dimensions of A, D is smaller, 
we consider running gradient descent with respect to the X and Y are the um, sort of weights that we're optimizing in gradient descent. Um, and we know that global solutions of this problem are going to be any X and Y such that X Y transpose equals the best rank D approximation to A. We know explicitly how to parameterize the set of solutions. And in particular, if A is rank R, where R is less than or equal to D, then all such X, Y sort of factor solutions will give us a value of the loss function that's zero. And they'll be global minimizers. Okay, but unfortunately, so, so it's very simple. We sort of understand what the, how to parameterize the optimal solutions, but the Lipschitz smoothness and the PL inequality fail. Um, quite uh, easy to see, you just compute the gradient of this loss function and observe uh, by the structure of the gradient that there's going to be the Lipschitz constant of, of the gradient must grow as the norms of the factors grow. So there's no global Lipschitz constant. And also the PL inequality sort of collapses when X or Y uh, has, uh, has zero R singular value. There's a saddle point at X equals Y equals zero. And so, so there you have no hope of converging to anything if you start there at gradient descent. Sort of. Nevertheless, um, um, gradient descent seems to work very well in practice starting from a ra random initialization, sort of Gaussian random X and Y. So why? Um, so again, for this talk, I'm not saying that we should use gradient descent as a competitive algorithm for matrix factorization. This is linear algebra, and that's a whole different class, and we have very specialized algorithms for matrix factorization. But it's a very good, simple prototype method for you know, optimization problems in, in, in neural networks, as well as optimization problems involving tensor factorizations. So there are these two sort of um, quickly harder cases to, to deal with that we should completely understand gradient descent on matrix factorization first, but we don't. Um, so the line of work on understanding sort of the convergence of gradient descent for matrix factorization is nowhere going back to 1930s or 40s or 50s. I mean, it's this very modern. I mean, Sujay Sangave is at the top of there, so that's great, from 2013. Anyway, so this is my very, very uh, short history, and I'm sorry if I'm leaving, leaving people off, but Burr Montero around 2004 sort of promoted this big idea that we should try to do non-convex optimization using simple iterative algorithms like gradient descent. And before then, and sort of even after then, people um, were all about uh, convex relaxations. Um, and Arya's talk was sort of in the same line, like let's just do the simplest, um, iterative hard thresholding to solve non-convex problems. And it works the best, it works great. But, but these are harder to analyze. So Burrow Montero sort of said, hey, don't worry, let, don't relax, don't relax, uh, but do relax. Just, uh, it's okay, solve low rank factor, factorization problems directly. And then um, lots of people sort of later on um, sort of um, promoted for matrix factorization and also um, a suite of non-convex optimization problems for which matrix factorization is the simplest one, but more, um, including Netropoly and um, Jane and Sangave, sorry, I took Jane off. Um, they, they showed that it's usually a spectral initialization plus local convergence for alternating least squares or so on can give you, be a good competitive algorithm for solving factorization problems. And then later on, people said, well, what we know in practice, we don't need that spectral initialization. In practice, you just do a random initialization and you can get global convergence. So let's just try to go there. And um, so Du et al. Um, in 2017 and others started to say, well, let's just gradient descent uh, directly, global convergence. Uh, they showed that uh, in, the worst, in the worst initialization, it's not good. It can take exponential time to escape saddle points. But we can't initialize at zero. We're gonna have to give a, an initialization dependent kind of rate um, or with high probability with respect to initialization. 2018, they started to analyze um, convergence for gradient flow, which is the limit as the step size goes to zero. Because then you get differential equations and the gradient flow, you can invoke the stable manifold theorem and, and say really nice um, mathematically uh, elegant uh, results about uh, convergence, but not convergence rates. So then in the last couple of years, uh, people started looking at gradient descent with fixed step size eta to try to really quantify the iteration complexity for the matrix factorization problem in particular. And these authors uh, got an iteration complexity uh, to get to an epsilon optimal matrix factorization 
And um, they showed uh, iterate, iteration complexity related to the condition number of A to the fourth power times some dimension factors. And then more recently, these authors improved that to condition number to the third power. Um, and this is starting from a random initialization. X naught, Y naught, just Gaussian random matrices. And these proofs are a bit um, complicated for me. They're, they're not, they're very far from the two line proof that smoothness and PL inequality give you linear convergence. It's, they're very specific for, for the particular problem. So we wanted to uh, try to extract some more, some more um, general structural assumptions and, and simplify the proof. And so to, to simplify that, I know that I'm going way over time, so I'm just gonna go really quick. We just looked at alternating gradient descent instead of gradient descent, because matrix factorization is a biconvex problem, so fix x, it's convex in y, fix y, convex in x. And so just uh, simply doing alternating gradient descent, which empirically is the same, theoretically makes it easier to, to, to give sort of a simple, simple theoretical understanding. Um, the other key observation we made was um, how to initialize to get a sort of simple analysis of gradient descent for matrix factorization. And what we found was that a step size dependent initialization simplifies things a lot. So if we look at matrix factorization, um, we suppose that the matrix is rank R and R is less than or equal to D, the dimension of the factor. So we're allowing for over-parameterizing the problem. When D is greater than R, we're increasing the amount of over-parameterization that we're building. Okay. If we initialize in an um, unbalanced way where X naught and Y naught are multiplied by one over the square root of the step size that we're gonna use times the step size. This is kind of weird, this unbalanced initialization. And we initialize X naught in the range, in the column span of A, where phi one and phi two are Gaussian matrices. This is like a interesting initialization between spectral initialization and purely random initialization. But it's no more computationally involved than running a step of gradient descent. You have to multiply by A anyway. So then, this simplifies things very nicely. For one, the column span of the XT factor remains the column span of A throughout the iterations by invariance of the alternating gradient descent updates. And so we can say that we know our gradient descent trajectory will lie in these very certain subspaces of the landscape, this column span subspace. And within that subspace, we can prove a PL inequality um, for a certain number of iterations. Um, basically, we can bound this, the R singular value of XT for a, for a number of iterations um, and lower bound it by this one over the square root of eta, which is just enough to get a, a nice uh, iteration complexity. And so our theorem is that alternating gradient descent with this unbalanced initialization, gradient, alternating gradient descent will converge to an epsilon optimal matrix factorization um, with a number of iterations and the the rate, the iteration complexity is proportional to the inch number squared of A. So sigma one squared A over sigma R squared A. So that's, um, that's improves on the results in the literature. And we give a very sharp characterization of how over parameterization helps. So if the over, if D equals R, so we don't over parameterize our factors, um, we get exactly a, a D squared, um, uh, dependence in the iteration complexity, but once D is like 1.5 R, we over parameterize by a small multiplicative factor, this is like, this constant is like two. So it, and this benefit, this over parameterization benefit, we get just using random matrix theory on the initial factors. And the numerical experiments, um, I just wanna mention show that our initialization is not just a theoretical tool, but really gives a completely different dramatically improved type of convergence analysis for this. And so the orange line here are like the convergence the shows how the loss decreases when we have this unbalanced initialization. The dotted line is our theoretical convergence rate and the green and blue lines are the convergence rate of gradient descent from a purely random initialization or just an initialization where X is in the column span of A and Y is random, but we don't do this rescaling by the square root of the step size. And um, this sort of benefit we see holds um, for various over, you know, it's for a little bit of over parameterization or more, the benefit extends even if we use larger step sizes than what our theory says we can use. So with larger step sizes, we still get a faster convergence. It's just not as dramatic as for smaller step sizes. And the benefit 
extends beyond what we can prove theoretically to when the matrix isn't exactly low rank, but has a best low rank approximation, and then we just converge to that best low rank approximation instead of zero. I'm so sorry. And so I um, won't we'll give the sketch of proof, but I just want to say that it's a very conceptually simple proof, and I have the feeling that this should extend to a lot of further problems. We're writing up um, the extension of this to tensor factorization, which actually gives a new state of the art algorithm for doing tensor factorization. So it's not just a theoretical thing, so we're excited about that. Um, and we think it should extend to stochastic gradient descent and um, to a ma ma matrix sensing and, and so on. So I'm so sorry for going over time. Thank you.